here that I've already been dealing with on my Legend keys, which are identical. This is the CL. This is the 2000 RL. They're within one model year of each other, but the keys look absolutely identical. That's better. Okay, I owe a huge thanks to my commenter that pointed me in the direction of my owner's manual. So I just learned something about this car. It has an optional audible signal with the alarm. And if you guys heard the first video, it's this really obnoxious 90s alarm, almost aftermarket sounding, which is why I thought maybe there was an aftermarket siren. But there's just a key sequence that you do with the fob and now it's quiet again. So thanks for that. I did already tackle the wiper arms as you've seen me do various times before. 14 millimeter socket to get that off and then I just hit them with some semi-gloss uh, paint. I'm gonna let them dry for just a quick sec before I fully fasten them back on the car. Little detail, I uh, haven't done much with the engine bay other than a quick, quick wipe down here on the side channels. It'll get a full uh, going over here in the next couple weeks. Uh, the wheels are also kind of a pain to clean. They have these little ridges built in here that I had to sort of squeeze a towel into to get out, but um, they came out really cool. The finish on these is almost identical to what is on my blue GSR, where they're almost chrome finish, sort of a really high polished aluminum here on the outsides with silver painted inserts. Are we going? Yeah. It's an airport run in my new CL. I've only had this car for four days and mom's one of the first people who gets to experience it. So what do you think so far? Oh, I had no idea that this would be a little quiz, but I think it's amazing such that I would like to be an owner after Tyson. So okay. pretty much he's gonna will it to me or something. Perfect. And she's off. Up to Southern Utah you go. Time for a CL update. I'm wasting no time getting started with this. Contacted my tent guy today and he has availability this afternoon. So this car does have quite a greenhouse on it. You really feel like you're driving in a fishbowl because the pillars are so thin. Um, but I think it'll be nice to give it a little bit more privacy and basically um, also protect the interior a little bit from the sun. So, wow, this thing is looking good. 20% tint all the way around, same as we did on the TL. Sorry for the background noise from the road next to me, but uh, definitely happy with this guy's work. He even covers up, you see how the brake lamp is integrated into the spoiler, so he covers up the, the brake lamp in the rear window, as it should be, and looks good. in Tempe, Arizona. I had them slice me a new key. Uh, I didn't have a spare key for this car. So what happens is the blade itself has a transponder inside it. So that required a little bit of additional work than just going to my local Ace Hardware, which I've done for other cars. But now at least I do have a spare key available to put in my back pocket for future use. You guys will not believe this. It just made my day. I had an envelope waiting for me today in the mail from the original owner of the CL, who I reached out to by snail mail to find out if he had any paperwork. Well, not only does he have paperwork, he had an original newspaper ad from October 16th of 1999. He had the window sticker. He had his original purchase contract. He even had notes from when he was negotiating on buying the car. There it is. Anti-theft radio code, business cards for the people he was corresponding with. Unreal. Happy to report, I printed a bunch of press releases this morning from the media newsroom on AcuraNews.com, including some cool stuff on when the first gen CL was introduced. It was sort of a revolutionary car for its time because it was the first Acura to be designed and built uh, both in the United States. It was produced in Ohio. Lastly, what's the cheapest way to get business cards when it's 1999 and you're a new sales guy? You type your name on a blank card. How cool is that? 
I don't know if this guy's still around, but he's the one who sold the 3.0 CL that went to whoever this owner's manual went to. I came across the 2.5, I'm sorry, 3.5 RL and 2.2 CL advertising planner. It's a compact disc that I'm gonna sample right now. And it looks like it contains photography, product, art, headlines, ads. It does, however, require eight megabytes of RAM. Uh-oh, there's some pretty sweet stuff in here. Uh, the files are separated out by RL versus CL. There's information on photos, illustration, headlines, and then these are dealer ads. So these were designed to have the dealer imprint their logo here and then put a price here. So reverse sticker shock. Every angle tells a story, kind of a cool tagline. And then this is a particularly cool ad. It says it looks different because it is, and then it's got a beauty shot here. I have collected a pretty good stash of Acura magazines and literature from over the years. Some of the, uh, everything in this pile is applicable to the first gen CL, so I've kept it for a reason in this stack. I liked this magazine, or this brochure specifically because it has the lineup of cars that are in my collection at the current time in white and in a variety of other colors. I'll just run through the stack real quick. This is the 2000 model year accessories. There's the 1998 accessories. Uh, this one's kind of cool because it goes through the powertrain of each of the cars in, I believe, 1998. A little intro brochure specifically for the 2.2 CL. Again, that was a pretty revolutionary car because it was both designed and built in America. Um, full line brochure from 98 for, again, everything in the lineup. 99 full line, uh, 99 technology specific brochure, as well as CL big heavy duty brochures from 97, 98, 99. Here's a 98 Canada CL brochure that's in French. Check this out. The Canadians only got four colors that year. And then a 99 Canadian brochure in English. And similarly, guess what? The Canadians only got four colors in 1999. Okay, so that's brochures. Then, we go to magazines, and I've been collecting from eBay and wherever I can find them. These are just gonna go in my stash. That's the originals, so when I get a magazine, I log it in the spreadsheet and I put the original in a manila folder, but first of all, I create color copies. So here's where the fun gets started. Car and Driver, March 1996. Oh, these are cool. Somebody had on eBay these competitive edge documents that are basically like a head-to-head -head sort of thing. Who knew the CL was going up against the SC300? Anyway, Car and Driver, Auto Week, had a big, nice spiel on the car as an American-built coupe, Japanese coupe, Motor Trend, March of 96. Is that right? Yeah, March 96. This was Auto Week, June of 96. Little brochure I found on eBay. Automobile Magazine. This one was a road and track. There's another road and track. First drive from, I don't know where. First drive, another one from I don't know where. This one is Car and Driver. Yeah, so that's pretty good amount of literature for this car that I like to keep with my binder just for future reference.